What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. So, I finally decided it was time to hook up uh, some more ores into our auto ore fortuner machine over here. Yeah, we have, like, all this coal, um, the dense coal ore and the regular coal ore, uh, just kind of sitting in our ore processing ME system. So, I changed it over so it will now process those ores. I just added those to the interfaces we had down below. Uh, so yeah, we are using a little bit of this dense coal ore. We have all of this coal ore to go through. We really don't need coal, but we have all these in ore form and I want to get them processed. We still got all of these ores here, uh, to process. Um, yeah, look at this. We almost have 10,000 nether iridium ores, which is ridiculous. I think that's almost 30,000 iridium when we get that fully processed. And then on top of that, we have an additional 9,000 regular iridium ores. Yeah, so if we ever do get into IC2, yeah, we're going to be able to get a lot of stuff busted out really quickly. So off camera, guys, I have been messing around with our beast stuff over here. And I've actually got quite a lot of stuff complete, even though like this area doesn't look like I've done work to it. Yeah, we've been breeding bees, so we now have our industrious queen, industrious bees, and we have our imperial bees. And what these are allowing us to do is create the royal jelly. This is the stuff that we needed last episode to make our production upgrades. And uh, I got enough to uh, make the production upgrades for our imperial, so we make the royal jelly faster. See, a little bit just kind of appeared there. So we make the royal jelly faster so we can make the production upgrades faster, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, we got a decent amount of this, so we should be able to make a bunch of production upgrades for the future. So we'll just let that go. Uh, we also have a bunch of this pollen stuff. Actually, I'm not sure what else we can use this stuff for. Let's take a look at the uses. So we can make slime balls out of that with propolis and the pollen. Um, I know you could use this stuff, yeah, for the scented panelings. This is if you wanted to make the alvearies, which we are not going to use since we are doing gendistry. Uh, we could make the iodine capsules. I believe that is to stop the weather. What else can we use that for? Scented gears. I'm not exactly sure what that is for. Aromic lump? Aromatic lump? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Some crazy stuff that we can do that for. We can put... Uh, flim flam on there, which is kind of silly. You can put flim flam on everything, it seems like. So, yeah, we have the bees going. Uh, I did switch over to a resident retriever instead of using the servos on each one of these that's just like extracting from one. You can just have one resident retriever which pulls from every inventory along this pipe network. So, yeah, you don't have to use as many of these um, upgrades, I guess you could say, pipe upgrades. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> I just have it on there. We just have this set to redstone control ignored. It's just pulling everything out of the inventory as it can. And we get the bees, we get the combs, we get all this other stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So over here, I've done some more stuff. Um, I have been getting a bunch of the genes from these bees. And we have collected quite a lot of these. So what I've been doing is just kind of scrolling my mouse wheel to take out until we have about five of each kind. Just so we don't have, you know, a million of each one. Uh, I did put in a basement down here, so we got a little bit of stuff going on. But what I've been doing is taking these genes over into this chest. This chest automatically pumps into a redstone furnace, which smelts those genes, gets rid of all the data on them. They turn back into the blink ones They get piped over into our main base network. So uh, if I look at my gene... Supply right here. This number is going up. So we are getting the blank ones back into the system So we don't have to keep making them again and again. Uh, there's no way to do that with the genetics labware So yeah, we just have to keep making those as we run low But yeah, the gene samples are reusable as long No, they, I mean they are just reusable as long as you don't want to keep them uh, So I did put in an applied energistic system I've been putting all of our bees and stuff over here. So all of the bees that we've created are here uh, the ones that I haven't moved over to this side yet is our Rocky Princesses. Because we have 5,470 and then if I try and move them over, they don't stack in my inventory. It would just be kind of a pain. So I'm going to have to like use the IO port, copy it from my AE system onto a disk, bring it over here and then dump it into another or back into this network. So this is just its own separate network. 
Uh, we just have 10 discs here. We're only using one, I believe. One of these ME drives has all of our Bs on it. Um, we do have a controller, but I'm not really using the controller for anything right now. That's just providing power for our network. Uh, but yeah, we just have the wire that comes up here to our terminal that's in the floor. And then we just have a wire coming over here to our ME interface and an export bus. This export bus, we are exporting combs, propolis, and this pulsating propolis. We have a fuzzy card expansion in here. So pretty much every type of comb is the same item ID. So it'll just eject all of the different types of combs in our network into this chest. And then that gets processed. Now, there's some weird things about uh, some of these different propolis. I'm having problems getting them to be uh, processed in the system. The way I have the system set up is kind of odd as well. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see. So let's go up top real quick. Uh, what we have here is just our centrifuge. And then below that, we have uh, the flux ducts going into them. And then I have covers on top of those so you can't see through. But yeah, we have these fluctuating item ducts underneath. So these carry power and items. Uh, it's getting the power right here. We just have a redstone energy flux duct uh, providing power to this flux fluctuating item duct network. Um, let's see. We have a resonant servo here pulling out of this chest. This chest is kind of like where we buffer all of our combs and stuff that's being processed. So... We export that from our ME system into this chest, and then this resonance servo will distribute the items through this pipe network into all of those uh, machines up above. Now, another thing I have over here is a ME interface, and this is how we're putting the items back into our network after they're done processing. So we have a resonant retriever, which is retrieving items from all of these different machines up above on that network. Um, yeah, so we have this retrieving honeycombs and propolis, or actually, I'm sorry, we have these blacklists, so it should be retrieving everything besides honeycomb and these propolis. Um, and this kind of works, except it leaves the propolis up in those machines up above, and I'm not sure how to get those propolis out back into this chest so they can go back up into the machine and be processed so we can get all the stuff out of them. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those puzzles you got to figure out. Um, so we have propolis up here. If I take that resonance retriever and I take the um, the blacklist propolis out of here when <laughs> it'll retrieve the items it'll go into our network it'll go into this chest and then this resonance servo will say hey here's an inventory let's put it back in the semi inter interface basically and it just makes a loop so the items are going through the pipes and through the networks and stuff like that it's just something I'm going to have to think about and try and figure that out off off camera some other time uh, when I have some free time. But for right now, I can take this propolis, take it directly out of those centrifuges, and then I can just stick it in this chest. Uh, they get pulled out. They go into a random inventory up here, and they start getting processed. Uh, those things do process into, I believe it is the IC2 rubber, the silky or sticky resin, this stuff right here. Um, we really don't need a lot of this stuff. <laughs> We're not really doing IC2, but yeah, that's what that stuff processes into. Okay. So that's kind of like the stuff that I've been working on off camera. One thing that I do want to do today is I would like to change out this floor inside of these honeycombs, except for the center one, which is kind of like our machine area. I want to leave this as this floor in here, but all the floors inside these outer combs areas, I want to change to grass. But I don't want to change the regular grass because I don't want animal spawning. So I think uh, if we switch it over to like this topiary grass, I think this looks just like grass but doesn't spawn mobs. I'm not sure. Uh, that's something we're going to find out actually. So you can craft this by using dirt and some seeds. So I wanted to test this, but we don't have very many seeds. We have six. <laughs> so we can make one topiary grass. It's not that great. Um... So I think what we're going to do, let's head back over to our AE room where we have our machines kind of set up <laughs> in a bad way that I still need to make better at some point. Yeah, this thing is ugly. Um, so we can take, what is it, wheat? If we take wheat and we're going to need, what is it called, flint? 
flint. We'll use this stuff right here. We can put that through... Oh my goodness, this machine setup is so terrible. Put it through the sag mill, and I believe each wheat turns into two or more. Maybe use some of this flint to make more uh, seeds. So anyway, we'll get a decent amount of seeds this way. And I think what we're going to end up doing is using that last forestry multi-farm that we have for a wheat farm. Okay, so there's some more seeds. So we'll grab some dirt. Let's go ahead and fill up the inventory with that. All right, so let's go hook that up. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what we're going to use this middle farm for. Um, it was suggested to me on a live stream that we set it up for a wheat farm, but I couldn't figure out why I ever want that. Now I have a reason why I want that. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to do this. So we'll go ahead and put in the dirt here, and we'll put in... Oh, oh okay, so we're going to have to actually set up one of those chips for this, I think. Okay, so we will get on that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to figure out how we can make the... The farm be a wheat farm, and I'm actually going to have to look that up. I don't know if there's a way that you can find that out in-game. So let me go find out which upgrades we need for our intricate circuit board, and we will be right back, guys. All right, guys. So it turns out we need bronze electron tubes, so we just have to put some bronze and some redstone inside a thermionic fabricator, and we can make a bunch of these tubes. So I'm just going to go ahead and craft as many of these as I can with all the materials we have. All right, that's fine. And I will take that extra glass out of there. Right, so now that we have that, the bronze electron tubes, we have an intricate circuit board. Uh, we're going to need a soldering iron. So we'll grab this guy. Uh, this does not require, or it doesn't have any durability, so you never have to make another one unless you lose it or something. Uh, electrical simulator, or stimulator, I'm not sure what that is. Manage farm, okay. So we'll put the intricate circuit in here, and then we will put bronze electron tubes here. So that turns that all to a crop farm. So yeah, now we have a managed farm for crops. Awesome. Okay, so we should be able to get this thing set up now. No problem at all. Am I lagging? I'm lagging. Come on now, don't lag. Oh, game. Why are you doing this to me? I'm going to warp into this dome here in a second. <laughs> Alright, I'll just go around. Maybe maybe I lagged right through that portal. I don't know. Yep, yeah, okay. Now we warped. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are we good? I think we might be good now. That's the bee area. Here's our trees. Okay, so if I right-click on the farm, I should be able to put in this crop farm here. There we go. Now it's showing wheat. So you can put the seeds over here. Uh, we're going to have to provide this with our fertilizer. Uh, this is my carpenter that I just used to make the intricate circuit board. Okay, so how do I have these other ones set up? It's just a... Okay, we're just extracting out of there. Let's grab some items. We need a servo, and we're going to need an item duct. We'll take one of these impulse ones that are a little faster than the regulars. So we'll stick that there. I'm also going to grab... Crescent hammer, throw my food on the ground. We'll disconnect that. I have my magnet turned off. That's kind of weird. I need this thing turned on. All right, so we did that. We'll put the servo right like this and ignore it. So that should put in fertilizer here. Great. Is that going to mess things up? No, that's fine. So I'll put in fertilizer. So we have fertilizer. We have water. We have dirt, seeds. We should be able to see this thing being planted over here. Okay, look at that. It is putting in little spots of water. It's not, like, not the most efficient uh, placement for that water since it can hydrate up to four blocks away, but I guess that's the way these farms do their thing. Is this out of dirt? No, it's still got dirt. Where's it placing it? I'm not seeing dirt being placed. All right, there we go. Now it's doing something. Okay, so we got to wait for um, the wheat to grow. And then we can go ahead and pulverize that wheat or use a sag mill on it to make more seeds and etc. etc. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of time, a little bit more time off camera here. I am going to water can this stuff, let it grow that much faster. Actually, I might just bone meal. Uh, we have plenty of bones. Yeah, <laughs> almost three quarters of a million bones. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use bone meal. I'm going to get a bunch of wheat. Get some seeds going, and we will be right back, guys. 
All right, guys. So I've been camping this for a little bit, bone mealing this stuff, and then I realized that there were these bone meal bags in this mod pack. Now, I use these a bit, I think, in agrarian skies, but what this does is it bone meals in a 3x3 area. So we can bone meal a whole lot of this wheat at a time. And it seems like this farm is pretty quick to realize, hey, we have fully grown wheat, start harvesting it. So yeah, it starts taking those out really quickly and then replants the seeds. So this is a really fast farm. If you just sit here and bone meal a few times, you just kind of go around in a circle. And by the time you get back around to where you started, you are good to go to uh, bone meal a little bit more. So yeah, this is really awesome. So I've been having some fun here, uh, just bone mealing this stuff. I made some auto crafting patterns in my applied energistic system uh, to make the, the bone meal bags. Uh, I totally to craft up a thousand of them. And we got like over 800 now, so it doesn't even matter if I'm like wasting them a bit. Uh, I just want to get some extra seeds going, get some extra wheat and all that stuff. So I'm going to continue to do this, get some seeds, make up some topiary grass, and we will be right back, guys. Alright guys, so I went ahead and made some of this topiary grass, and it does in fact look like it's the same biome color as the regular grass, which is awesome. Uh, so if this stuff does not spawn mobs, I might get rid of all of this grass that I have right here, and swap this all out for the topiary grass. I mean, having animals is cool and stuff, but there's always animals over here, they're always random, and I didn't really want them to begin with. I can spawn them using mob souls or whatever later on. Um, so yeah, our wheat field is doing pretty good. We're just going to let it go and do its thing. We'll collect wheat over time. Uh, currently I have 12. I've just taken about a thousand of them and turned it into seed. Uh, so yeah, we're still making seeds right now. So yeah, we're collecting a bunch of seeds so I can make a bunch more of the topiary grass. So I think what I want to do, uh, I want to just start cutting away some of this stuff. My magnet's on, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I want to start cutting away some of this stuff. And I want to replace this with the topiary grass, just so it's a nice kind of a green color over here. It kind of feels like, you know, even though we're doing bees in kind of a um, machine way, an industrial way, uh, we should have grass around here and some flowers and things like that, just to make it look a little nicer. So let's go ahead and we will just replace the innards of these honeycomb areas with this topiary grass. Hopefully, like I said, it does not spawn animals and things like that. Um, we can just punch it. We don't need silk touch either, which is great. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and place this stuff around. Um, actually, you know what I could do? In my enter pouch, I have a resonant exchanger. What do I have this thing set to? Okay, I need to... Set it to the topiary grass. Then I think if I hit page up, it changes the radius. Whoa, that's a little too big, I think. Oh, right there. So if I do that... Ah, oh, that's much better. <laughs> we don't have a lot of the topiary grass. I'm definitely going to have to make some more of the stuff, but that is pretty cool. Okay, so let me go ahead and get some more stuff going here, guys, and we'll be back. So probably one of the more frustrating things in this game is when you figure something out... Uh, that you want to do and then you realize it can't do exactly what you want it to do uh, What do I mean by that? Let's get a rose. No, what is it called? Um, dandelion, okay, we'll grab a dandelion uh, So this is the topiary grass, but we can't plant flowers on it and that's kind of a problem I mean, it's kind of cool that we have grass But I also want to have like, you know, tall grass and flowers and things like that around to make this more nature looking but we can't place flowers on it so I also went over here to the Batania area that we have man we got so many animals spawned um, so I came over here hoping that we'd be able to place some of the Batania flowers on this topiary grass and again same kind of a thing it doesn't look like at all we can't plant them on the topiary grass well that's kind of annoying like what good is the topiary grass if it doesn't act just like grass, except animals can't spawn on it. Oh no. I mean, I guess it does have the sides as grass too, so you could build up a mountain or something with them, but... Yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to do what we want it to. Uh, so, my second option <laughs> was to actually use regular grass. So, uh, over at the Nexus, I went to our quarry age. Uh, we've been using the ender quarries, which turns the ground into grass on the top layer. And then over here, F3A, uh, over here I used my 
Draconic Staff of Power, and I have been coming through here on a 9x9 mode, so I can barely touch the ground down below, and just been collecting a bunch of grass this way since we have Silk Touch. Okay, so, yeah, plan didn't work as I really wanted to, but I think we'll be able to make something work using regular grass. Now, I think uh, we can only have so many animals spawned in a world. Oops, wrong one. Uh, Ender Pouch. Yeah, I think there's only so many animals that can be spawned in a world, like in each dimension. So, oh my goodness, why is that keep throwing out of my inventory? Uh, so if we fill up our world full of like, I think it's 15 animals, something like that, then no more are going to be able to spawn. So we could just have, I don't know, 15 sheep sitting somewhere in a looted chunk, and that'll be all we need to do to prevent animals from spawning. Yeah, I really just didn't want animals spawning in our bee area, uh, so... Okay, now the map changed. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I am going to undo what I just did over here with the topiary grass. So we got this one done. We got this one done. This one's partially done. So we got three of them. Another thing I didn't like about the topiary grass, if you look at the mini map, it doesn't even appear like there's anything there. I mean, it's a slightly different color, I guess. Maybe not. I don't know, <laughs> but it doesn't look green. Uh, if we come over to like the Batania area, that's definitely green. And that's kind of one of the other things I wanted on the mini map to show up was the green color. Okay, well, it's not a total loss. So we'll be able to just swap that all out with the grass. I will just find a place to stick some animals in the world so we don't keep getting them spawning over there in the Batania area. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and start swapping this stuff out for regular grass and we'll be back, guys. Ah, that looks much better. So as I was placing this grass in, like I was filling in this one over here or something, and I went to go do something, and this cell was like completely full of animals. It was funny, like the sheep were finding their way out, they're walking along this path up here and then along the edge, and like hanging out on this wall. And I was like, how the heck did they even get over there? And I watched one of them actually do that. But yeah, it was kind of surprising. But yeah, uh, anyway... We have all the grass in here. We are now producing flowers, so this will actually look fairly natural, eh, give or take. It'll look a lot better than it did before anyway. Uh, I like the way it looks on the mini-map now, which is really cool. And then uh, down here underneath our applied energistics area, which is always loaded, I've added in this little thing down here. It's just basically a one by one holding pen for some sheep. So the sheep that were spawning around here, I grabbed, what is that that I'm seeing? <laughs> is that like one of our spawners? Yeah, okay, that's what that is. Uh, yeah, so um, the sheep that we had spawning around here, I grabbed some with some single use safari nets. So I had my whole inventory full of like these sheep. And I was trying to get them down into a one by one hole and they just wouldn't go like I'd you know, drop them right here. And they'd bounce out and they'd kind of hang out over here. So I decided to get some conveyor belts, so wherever uh, the sheep decides to land after I unsafari net them, they'll land on the conveyors and they'll eventually go down into that hole down there. So we have about 11, 12, 13 sheep, something like that down there. I'm not exactly sure how many. Uh, if we do get more animal spawns around here, I will definitely grab them and then stick them down into that little containing er containment area. So that should prevent all other animals from spawning in this age, I do believe. I haven't seen any spawn since I set that little thing up down there. So I'm having pretty high hopes that that will prevent other mobs spawning. We won't have to deal with that with having regular grass around here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got this whole thing set up exactly the way I wanted it. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work with the topiary grass. We did have to use regular grass, but we got to figure it out. And yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, uh... I'll probably continue on with these bees off camera. I know some people are getting kind of bored with me doing this stuff. Uh, so as far as breeding them and getting them to like the, uh, the other tiers so we can get resources and things, I'll probably start doing that off camera when I have time. We'll fill out, um, yeah, these other cells when we get the other types of bees going. But yeah, guys, I think that is going to do it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. I hope you guys did like this episode, even though... Uh, we started on a project that ended up in failure. We got it going, and yeah, we found a solution that's going to work. And now we have a wheat farm set up for whenever we need wheat. 
breeding animals or whatever else in the future. So yeah, that's pretty cool too. All right, guys. That's it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. Hope you guys liked it. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.